he's put together in a great group of guys and, and guys to coach. Extremely excited to be here. My fan for my family to be here too. Um, obviously, uh, specialist group. We've got a lot to uh, to prove. Um, you know, we're very inexperienced there. Losing the three guys who had the majority of the kicks, punts, and snaps last year. But we have a good group of guys who went through the spring with us and have come in this summer. Uh, extra, excited about where they're at and what they're going to do. I'm um, excited to work with them. They're extremely coachable. Work extremely hard. And again, excited to work with them. Um, I'll turn it over to Coach Ludd. Thanks, Aiden. Thanks for your efforts in being here today. Uh, just a couple things I'd like to touch base on. We talk about uh, our fall camp objectives. And last year we went into length about the unit meeting we had earlier that day. We did not have that meeting today, still in the summer plan. But uh, we'll obviously dive into that tomorrow morning uh, when we get with the players. But it's been an excellent summer of physical development led by James Dobson and the strength staff. And the three objectives that we were really focusing on offensively in fall camp are as follows. One, with a continuous effort and commitment, we will emphasize and execute the details and fundamentals required to be a great ball security football team. In the meeting room, in drill work, in competitions against the defense, this aspect of play is our number one priority as an offensive unit. Obviously, we cannot score if we don't possess the football. Our players understand that ball security is their job. And all positions take great pride in understanding and executing extreme ownership in ball security. So what that means is the left tackle, even if the play is being run right, he is responsible to do the best job possible to do everything he can to protect the ball. You've got to execute his assignment. If the ball breaks to the second level, we have to pursue and cover down. We will be a great ball security football team. Objective number two, through unit discipline, unit discipline and communication, we will establish a run-to-win mentality. Our objective offensively is plus four rushes and explosive runs. Led by a veteran offensive line, quality depth at tailback, and a veteran quarterback, we will place great emphasis on how we practice our core runs. Tempo, explosive movements, and finish will be emphasized on a continuous basis and our players will respond. Our offensive structure has the ability to put players in optimum position for sex success by utilizing multiple formations and personnel groupings. Within these multiple personnel groupings, we'll be able to feature role players which will allow that player's skill set to be magnified. Not everybody is a 60 play player. Some guys are going to be on the field for 8, 12, 15 plays and we're going to ask them to do what they do well. We will have a run to win mentality on offense. Objective number three, with multiple pass protection schemes and quarterback launch points, we will generate more explosive plays in the passing game. Analytics from last season tell us that if we completed a 20-yard 20, 20 pass in a drive, we had 76% touchdowns on those drives. A 15-yard pass completion equated to 63% touchdowns. Through graduation, we are replacing 120 or so receptions but I have great respect and confidence for this group of wide receivers, tight ends, and running backs to pick up uh, where we left off in terms of throwing the ball downfield. Completing deep balls, just like ball security and running the ball, requires a hardcore mentality from the entire offensive unit. When we call a deeper pass play, the offensive line understands and appreciate that the quarterback's going to be holding the ball a little bit longer, and the pass protection has to be a premium. The wide receivers, tight ends, and running backs understand that winning the one-on-one -on -one in the passing game absolutely critical to our success and route depth, route mechanics, route integrity are an absolute must. The one thing with that, explosive pass plays are not always designed. The best ex explosive pass plays are when you complete a six-yard hitch and the wide receiver, the running back, the tight end complete that or turn that play into an explosive play. And finally, the quarterback decision, or the quarterback play, his decision making and poise in the pocket are going to be absolutely paramount to the offense's success in terms of throwing the football. And one thing we ask Kyle to do is know when to check the ball down. Okay, if the deep ball's not there, know when to check it down. And we have a lot of plays in our offense. If the pre-snap look isn't right, check, check out of the play. So it's check down or check out if the shot play doesn't develop. So objectives, again, to summarize, 
ball security, run to win mentality, and generating more explosive pa pass plays. Thank you. All right, excited to be here. <laughs> Thanks for Coach Mason and all of his coaches. This is a really fun to be around coaching staff that works, all right, and is excited to get started and has really grabbed on to some of the things we talked about. My family and I have enjoyed the heck out of Nashville, getting to know it. It's a great city. The people are great. That is not a lie when people tell you that, all right. You're greeted with smiles. Okay, so we're excited to be here. Now, for our defensive objective, since we've came in, our number one thing we want is the ball. There's only one on the field at a time. You just heard Coach Lutt. All right, I speak slightly different because I'm a defensive coach, okay? I get excited, really excited about it, okay? We want the ball, there's one on the field. Everything we do, we do defensively here is designed to get the football, okay? We, we've been emphasizing that, and are you gonna get it every time? No, but you should be working to get it every time. You should do everything you can to track it, to chase it, to pull it out, to get it, to give it back to Coach Ludd and the offense, and because that's how you win football games. Okay, so going into camp, two objectives for the defense. One is to live our identity. What I mean by that is this, every person's different. Okay, all you different, everybody listening's different, everybody's different. So how do you come together and learn how to play the ultimate team game, this game? Okay, we gotta understand that. We gotta understand how everybody learns, and we gotta put that together. And then we gotta get whatever 11 players are on the field to stop the offense. That's our job. Okay, so as coaches, that's what we're doing. So how does that fit in this identity? You've got to understand everybody's different first. Then, just like Andy said about certain players playing certain roles, that's what we got to understand. If guys are really good at shedding blocks, that's what they're going to do. Okay? If guys are really good at covering, that's what they're going to do. Now, we'll still blitz from every angle and all those things, but we want to get guys really good at their own identity because everybody's their own person and then put that together. So by living our identity, that means attacking the football wherever it is. That means you've heard us say, and we put out pictures around here about all gas, no brakes. That means there isn't any brake. That means wherever that ball is, we are flying around to the football. <coughs> one at a time, that's our job. Because there's only one, go get it, okay? That means learning how to get off of blocks, okay? The offense is putting in positions and putting in plays where, yeah, you might have to play a double team. So what, how do you do that? And what kind of effort does it take to get off the double team and find the ball? Or set the edge, or play RPOs, whatever it is. Okay, so that's the next one. So living your identity, that's the identity, and then putting that together, okay? And then the second thing on defense is to own our scheme and technique. We're not borrowing it, it's ours. It's our defense. It's a star V. Okay, we're gonna own that. We're gonna learn how to do that in camp so we can put that on display as we get to play people with other colored helmets and jerseys and things, okay? And now, and it, within that is, you gotta know how you fit within the 11 players that are on the field. You gotta do your job, of course, but do your job and then find the ball. So that's working together, extra run fits, extra pass fits. It's awesome we get to go against this offense because they run it right at you. So you get to see, you get to learn how to play with physicality the right way. Okay, and then learning our tackling system that goes into that. All right, we are, a, we are a tackling system where we want to be aggressive, we want to knock back, we want those things, but we want to take the head out of contact as much as possible. We want to train it the correct way within the rules so that we're safe and aggressive. And one of the ways is just straight tracking to the ball. With everybody running to the ball, we want to take really good angles because the biggest plays, the explosives that Coach Lutt and some people are looking for are cutback plays and things such as that. Okay, so that's our camp objectives on defense, and again, excited to be here. A couple of questions for the coordinators. Andy, what's, what constitutes an explosive run for you? You said you want to be plus four in that. Plus, plus four would be an efficient run. Explosive run is 12 plus. Jason, you've, been, uh, you've had a lot of experience in, in, in the NFL. A lot of the players have told me you relate well to them. How is relating to players different college to NFL? Well, we start the same way, kind of what I just said about identity. Every person's different. We got to, as a coach, your job is to help that player get better every day. So we break it down. We work a lot with the individual player to do that. Been very fortunate. Worked for great bosses, head coaches, organizations wherever I've been that have been able to. We've been able to take pieces from. What I mean by that is certain organizational pieces, pieces, or certain ways to deal with a type of a player. Not comparisons because everybody's different, but just finding what make, makes each guy tick and getting them excited about how they fit in, what their role is and how they fit in. 
by promoting what they do really well, but also helping them work on their weaknesses so that they can grow there. So we treat each player individually, and we love them up, and we tell them what they do good, and we expect that to turn good into great, and then what their weaknesses are, we move those up into that good category, and we stay on it every single day, and we approach it the same way. We have different sayings in our defensive room, and I'm not going to share at this point in time about doing that. We need to be the same people every day. You come to work, this is a great game. You get to put this awesome jersey on. All right, it's black, it's gold, it's awesome. All right, and we need to live that every day. Andy Wood, can you tell us about Mo and Alan Walters? Uh, are they similar to Cal, different? Uh, I think that they're different. Uh, you know, and not working with them firsthand, you know, you're evaluating film and you're getting feedback and talking talking with different players about them, how they spin the ball. I think they're both going to be more athletic, you know, than Kyle, uh, just a little bit more athletic. I don't see the scheme changing in terms of going to spread when one of those two young men goes in, but uh, they'll bring a little bit more there. Uh, both are very, very uh, intelligent young men, so I think they'll pick up the, the system well, but it's not like where Kyle Shermer is in year four of the offense. So there's going to be some adapting that would go on, go in place, and things that we're going to ask them to execute maybe a little bit less than what we're asking Kyle in fall camp. Andy, you had mentioned analytics. That's not something I've heard you talk about a lot publicly. Was there a maybe a change in self-scouting or approach, or just maybe mentioning things that you've used before that you've not. Yeah, there's there's a, a Vanderbilt alum, as a matter of fact, runs an analytics, a football analytics here out of Nashville, and we've subscribed to that service for three or four years now. So we've always used him, and uh, he has excellent help with us in terms of self scout and things like that. But those were just a couple numbers that really jumped out us at us this season. Um, but the data, it's it's unbelievable the the amount of information they can put out. It's almost overwhelming. So we kind of pick and choose what we're looking for, and he's very helpful in terms of saying, hey you've got to get better at this, in his opinion, or you've got to emphasize this a little bit more. And uh, so I appreciate that company very much. Sean, what do you think the benefit is to just working in special teams as opposed to also coaching a position or anything like that? What's the benefit, you think? I think we get more time to be detailed in our schemes and techniques and then spend more time on the, on the little details that maybe the coach who's coaching a position doesn't get the opportunity to do. I think plus it allows us to coach the specialists more during practice. I think a lot of times when a position coach gets pulled away to go to individual or he goes to team period and then the specialists are kind of stuck by themselves, you give them a script or, or to work with, but to be over there and be able to film them and talk to them and help them develop on a daily basis, I think will help them hopefully play better. I, I saw us get better from day one to, to day 15 in, in spring practice and hopefully continue on through fall camp. Jason, they say that the most important game is the next one. Uh, you start off the back, it's MTSU, a very unique offense. How much of camp is one eye on getting ready for the middle and one eye on getting your guys ready for that hectic, high-powered offense? Well, first, Sean's welcome to come to the defensive coaching room anytime he wants. So <laughs> if he ever needs anything, wants to come in there, he's good. We, we are teaching similar tackling. We are teaching tackling the same. Uh, so looking to opponents and just opponents, our number one focus is us. We are really working to be the same every day and get better every single day. Now, there's certain scheme things that, yes, you, you as coaches, we're studying. We're studying the whole time. But then we'll pick and choose when those things get installed. We have to be ready. What I mean by that is we've got to master that identity. We've got to be ready before those come in. So we will add those as we see fit as we move through camp. So it's, a, it's an adjustment daily, weekly that we talk about as a staff and so we're ready to go in and coach, coach Mason and us whenever we're ready for, okay, here's the piece we're going to need for, you know, get ready to play that first game, which we're real excited about. Less than a month, right, today? So it's going to be as we go through camp, we will determine those. We've put a few things away, of course, because that's what coaches are doing, always looking ahead. But our focus is daily. That's how you get better. We've got to get better. Andy, Derek said he anticipates sort of running back by committee this year. How, how would you balance you know, like personnel groups that feature guys' strengths versus just a guy who gets a hot hand as running backs do from time to time and, and using them that way? Yeah, it's, uh, as I mentioned, the, the, the depth and quality of depth at the tailback position is a great situation uh, for the Commodores. And balancing out the skill sets and the personalities in that room, it's a great challenge. 
but the thing that I have a lot of confidence in drawing back from my experiences and coaching good backs throughout my career is finding ways, being creative and how you're using them, getting two tailbacks in the game at the same time. Uh, but it, it is a balancing act, but what a great challenge and a great opportunity as an offensive coordinator. Sean, how impressed have you been with Parker and what, has been, what he's been able to come in here and do for a punting unit that needed to improve after last year? We're talking to Coach Dobson, I mean, he's come in, I think, really assimilated himself with the group of guys and, and become, you know, one of the leaders and stuff. As a grad transfer, he's extremely smart and mature, understands what he has to do. I haven't had a chance to work with him due to the rules in the summer and stuff, but I know he's worked extremely hard in the weight room, and those guys have gotten together out on the field, you know, multiple times, three to four nights a week and then during the day and has worked extremely hard. So um, he's been very impressive as a person and he's got a maturity level to him. Um, I think he's he's definitely gonna, he's, he's come from a program where he was all Ivy League last year and he has a lot of game experience. And two guys he competed with at Columbia have went on um, last year and punted at Kentucky and Georgia from Columbia. So he's used to seeing that. I know he's up for the challenge. He's excited about that. And, and competing in the SEC. So I'm looking forward to what he has to do. On the flip side of that, in the return game, Derek said he wanted somebody to come in and be able to give you 10 yards per return on punts. And team averaged about seven last year. Are you looking, what are you looking at in terms of blocking and in terms of just getting guys in there to be able to make that happen? We're going to identify the best 11 players we can and teach them the base fundamentals. They, they started to learn that in the spring. Um, I think they carried over to the summer when we worked with them, the little bit we had, the chance we had, and we'll continue that in the fall. I think we have a good group of guys that are athletic. Um, you know, coaches, the staff's recruited well and has continued to improve the talent here, and we'll identify those best guys. And then the guys who can consistently catch the ball first, you know, and secure it and hand it to the officials is going to be the most important thing. You know, speaking on what Coach Ludd said, you know, ball security is going to be the most important thing. But identifying the guy that can secure the ball and then has been able to be a threat to get the ball up the field. And then we'll, our guys will know that we have guys back there that can do that, and they'll block that much harder for them when they know there's a threat back there. We'll identify that guy. Chris, in, with the last in terms of big plays in the return game, let's say, for instance, you've got a starting wide receiver who's your best return guy. But that also, having him in there exposes him to injury and getting worn down. How do you balance, maybe if you got a guy who's your best guy there, but he's on the field for all the offensive snaps, do you – do you make an adjustment and go to a different guy, or do you just put the best guy out there and let him get as many reps as he can get across the board between what you do and what Andy does? I think you'd be, you're judicious in the situation. Um, I think the Coach Masons, we've talked about you know, starters playing on special teams. And I think guys have, there's been a great buy into what we're trying to do here through the spring and, and showing clips of how that can help them be successful the next level. And, I think guys, starters who haven't played in special teams for a couple years are coming up to me asking what teams can they get on, what phases can they play on. So they're excited about what we're doing. So you know, we'll, we'll be judicious in how we how we use a guy. If a guy's tired, and he's I've seen him out there. You know, it's one of our wide receivers, and I see that he's tired. We may stick the next best guy out there, but if he hasn't had as many snaps, we're going to try to get him out there and play the best guy that we can that gives us the best opportunity. I don't think you can ever worry about injuries and 